Oh, hey, how you doing? I'm glad you could make it. You're just in time to start talking about Chapter 2, Key Issue 1. Where is the world's population distributed? Why don't you hang out for a little while and we start talking about this section? Alright, so the first thing we're going to look at is the intro section. And when you're reading it, you're going to come across that it asks one important question, and that's why study population? Why is it important? Well, it comes up with three main reasons why. Number one, there are more people alive on Earth now than ever before. Seven billion. That's with a B. Seven billion. That's just a lot of people. And there's a couple reasons, real simply, why we have that. The first is something as simple as clean drinking water. We're seeing it more and more readily available for people. And another one is vaccinations. And with vaccinating babies, we are starting to make them immune and less susceptible to diseases that they would normally get in childhood. The second thing is the population is increasing faster and faster than ever before. And this is something that's really important for geographers and a lot of other professions. And how do we handle this? What should we do? Is there a way to maintain it and control it? The final one that it discusses is that most of this growth is in LDCs. So when we're looking at where the population is growing, it's in poorer countries. Wealthier countries see very little population growth, in some cases even see negative growth. All of this comes down to one question, are we overpopulating? And the key is that you have to understand what overpopulation even means. Overpopulation means that you have exceeded the amount of resources for that group of people. So if an area is not exceeding that, then you're fine. America is far from overpopulation because we are not exceeding the resources that we have to feed and protect our people. All right, so where's the world's population distributed? That is the question that goes along with key issue one. When we look at where the world's population is, it's primarily in Asia. East Asia and South Asia contains most of the world's population. Within East Asia, China contains five-sixths of the population of that region, followed by Japan and Korea. In South Asia, India dominates, along with Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. We then skip to number four, and that is Southeast Asia, which contains Indonesia and the Philippines and the other islands in that region. Now, going back to number three, the third most populous area on Earth is Europe, especially Central and Western Europe. Those are the regions that are, contain most of the world's population. The reading will then continue to go on and talk about how North America, including the major cities in the northeast of the United States and southern Canada, contains some of the world's population, but it's not the majority, it's not the highest concentration. So those are the areas where we see most of the world's population. All right, so now we know where most of the world's population does live, we're going to briefly talk about where people don't tend to live. One of the words that comes up in here is ecumeni. Now, ecumeni is not something you order at an Italian restaurant. It's not like linguini or fettuccine, I'm going to get my ecumeni. Ecumeni is land that has permanent human establishments on it. When we look at where most people live, we avoid three areas typically. We tend to avoid desert regions and dry lands. We tend to avoid wetlands, like very swampy regions like the Everglades in northern Louisiana. And we tend to avoid highlands like the tops of mountains. While we do find people living there, typically these are the regions where we see people not usually live. All right, so the last part of key issue one is population density, and there's three terms that go along with that. Arithmetic density, physiological density, and agricultural density. Arithmetic density takes the entire land a country owns and divides it by how many people live there. It's to try to see how crowded or how spaced out your people are. The problem is a lot of countries have lakes, rivers, mountains, desert, so we find that people don't generally live in all areas of a country. So we use physiological density to figure that out. When you look at Egypt, most of its population lives along the Nile River. The rest is, for the most part, useless desert land. So they're very concentrated. If you look at the rhythmic density, it would look like they're not very crowded. But when you look at physiological density, you only can look at where most of the people live. 
China's the same way. While China's one of the biggest countries on earth, much of its land's in the Himalayas where people can't live. So you're scrunching more people into a smaller area. The final term is agricultural density. This takes all of the land a country owns and divides it by how many farmers they have. The reason why this is important is America, 1-2% to of our employers in this country are farmers. Whereas you go to a poorer country like Nigeria, you're going to find out nearly half of the workers work in agriculture. That is because we're much more efficient and we're better at what we grow because we have the chemicals, the computers, and the technology to be able to grow food more effectively.